These are challenging times, uh, having to endure a decade of sustained war and one of the most severe economic downturns in our history. And that means that resources are finite. And yet, how do you compromise national security? One of the ways that you can make sure in times like these that you're ready and that you're not compromising the safety and future of your country is making sure that you're effectively employing your human capital, your people, your talent. The employee piece is the capstone to the strategy. Here we think we're really talking about an asymmetric U.S. advantage. When you've got the right individual at the right time, at the right place, and you're employing their talents, you've moved from assignment of widgets and interchangeable people to the combinations of talents that give you a synergy, where the whole is worth much more than the sum of the parts. When we look at our officer career model with its four components, assess, retain, develop, and employ talent, we look at employ as the core. It's almost the linchpin of the model. When we think about employment, the end state of employment is to liberate an individual's talent so that they can perform optimally. That's the key. Human Resources Command, HRC, is charged with employing our officers. They look at a lot of dimensions that are sort of void of talent. Their focus is fairness. What's fair to the officer corps in general? They're looking at how long has it been since you've deployed? How many times have you been stationed outside of the country? These are the things that drive their assignments. When you think about it, the Army's current employment paradigm is in many ways indebted to an industrial past. Assignments are made by a central authority, which is the arbiter of who does what work, when they do it, and how they do it. And that's a problem. Our officers don't work for the central authority. They work for commanders in organizations across the Army. The approach we're advocating is focused more on talent talent matching. We're looking at it from the perspective of the taxpayer. We're looking at it from the perspective of the soldiers that are led by these officers. We're looking at it from the perspective of national defense. How can you get the best bang for the buck? Fairness is important and it certainly should be a consideration, but the focus should be on talent. A fundamental problem confronting the Army is its ability to capture talent in terms of data. When the Army is confronted with an unexpected crisis like the earthquake in Haiti, it needs to be able to reach out to its officer corps and find out who the experts would be. But it wasn't able to do that because it didn't have the data. We've had folks in Haiti before. We've had people deal with earthquakes before. Uh, a lot of talents out there in the Army, but none of them documented. And now the United States is going to respond. The president says we're going to do it. So who do we send? We send widgets. Who's been? We don't know. Who's done a disaster? We don't know. Who can build buildings? May not know. Clearly, you'd be better off if you could find the right talent, the right experiences, the right skills, and put them on the ground in Haiti at the right time. Not six months from now, but today. Quite frankly, the Army doesn't know what talent it has. It doesn't have information systems that can do this, that can tell it what kind of talent is possessed by its people and what kind of talent is in demand right now in its organizations. The Army's got needs, and those needs typically come from units. They've got something to do. The Army's got talents, and those are provided by the individuals. The two of them don't know each other but technology could let them know each other. We see this every day with things like Facebook, LinkedIn, all these social networking sites. People who've never met are discovering each other, discovering each other's interests, their attributes, their talents. The Army needs to adapt some of these approaches in ways that will incentivize officers to give data up, 
so that the army could better manage it. And then we'll double back through and then push down into it. The army knows an awful lot about the professional side of the individual, but probably not as much about the granularity of what that individual has done or things that individual does on his or her own time that could also be productive for the army. Employment is where the rubber meets the road. If you do everything else right, you've got an officer corps that makes the Army wildly efficient, that you get the highest return on your investment. The return on investment we're talking about is not dollars in the bank. We're talking about lives that are saved, wars that are shortened, national security that is enhanced. Not by going out and getting different people, but by maximizing the productive potential of the people that have already chosen to join you. Return on investment, that's what we're talking about. Employment is where it all comes together. <laughs>